So will Ethereum succeed? That's what we're talking about today in this video. Hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you could download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So will Ethereum succeed? And that's what we're talking about today. So in order to answer that question, I'm actually gonna you know show you some real numbers, some real usage statistics on the network. I'm gonna kind of give you my opinions and try to answer some of your questions. So I'm actually making this video in response to a really great article that just came out. So the article was talking about you know what happened with the Ethereum network in 2018. It's a really great article. I recommend you check it out. It's by Josh Stark and some others, uh, including Evan Van Ness, who does the Weekend Ethereum newsletter. I highly recommend you check that out if you haven't already. So credit to those guys for helping me make this video. And if you're watching, I'd love to have you on the channel sometime. So in order to answer the question, you know, will Ethereum succeed? You have to define what you mean by that. You know, how would you measure that? What would that look like to you? So I think success to some people looks like everyone you know using blockchains and you know Ethereum and all these other blockchains basically like overthrowing these massive corporate giants who have central control over everything and the entire world is decentralized. And sure, that may be you know your definition of success, but I don't know that that's always like the best way to look at things. So I think a lot of this attitude is actually just like impatience, right? There's a lot of people who just want a mass adoption to happen yesterday so that they could be right, that blockchain technology was actually going to work, that the price of cryptocurrency was going to go up for the long run. And you know, like I understand that, but that oversimplifies the situation that's actually at hand. I mean, we're talking about really big problems that don't just get solved overnight. Like we don't solve blockchain scaling issues. We don't solve, you know, the problems that plague the blockchain overnight. There's some of the smartest people in the world trying to fix these problems. And it's going to take time in order for them to, you know, work out the issues that we have right now, right? So let's step back kind of from that impatient attitude and actually look at like where we come from and recognize the progress that has been made and actually, you know, recognize the success that we're having right now and have already had. Because there's a lot of success that we can just say has been successful. Because if you think about it, it started as an experiment to see if you could run arbitrary programs on a blockchain. So by that definition, it's already successful. We've already created a blockchain where you can write code with smart contracts and put it out there and create applications that people will use. I mean, dApps are a thing. People actually use them. Sure, your next door neighbor might not use dApps. You know, your your mom and dad may not use dApps. But that doesn't mean that we've actually done something that's incredibly hard to do and had some degree of success. So I think we should acknowledge that. So let's look at some of the statistics about this to see where we've come from and where we're headed. So let's look at this graph here that talks about the growth of Ethereum in 2018. You can actually see the growth of the network from 2015 all the way through 2018, right? And you can see this massive spike at the end of 2017 that goes all the way through 2018, right? So it did taper off a little bit towards the end of the year, but you can see basically it leveling out and staying steady um, from, you know, basically the first part of the year all the way to the end of the year, right? So another graph I want to look at actually is the number of people using the network. And this is based on the number of transactions that are occurring on the network, right? So anytime you're sending Ether from one account to another or you're you know, interacting with a smart contract or something like that, you're creating a transaction on the blockchain. And that is basically what we see here. We see a huge spike of this at the beginning of the year towards the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. A lot of that had to do with the big, you know, bull market and the top of the market and people, you know, buying into the cryptocurrency ecosystem and trading on exchanges and things like that. And that quickly tapered off as people started selling those assets and moving on to other things. Um, but we still see a lot of network activity from transactions throughout the entire year. And, you know, more throughout the entire year than any of the years in the past. So there's been a lot of growth in the network. And the next thing is actually the growth of blockchain developers coming into the ecosystem. This is the monthly downloads of the Truffle framework, which is, you know, a smart contract development framework that I've used heavily on this channel. And we can see that this topped out over 100,000 downloads per month, uh, several months in a row towards the end of 2018. And you can see this massive growth throughout the entire year. So that's another impressive growth marker for the network throughout the year as well. 
Another thing I want to mention are these big projects that launch on the network throughout the year. A lot of people launched dApps in 2018, but there are a few that are really noteworthy that have been working on some really groundbreaking technologies for a long time that actually launched in 2018 and are in production and people are using them. You know, the first one is MakerDAO uh, with their DAI stable coin. This is a huge deal. It's been working on this for a long time. And we can actually see that the value of Ether was over $275 million uh, as of December 31st, right? And the next project is Augur, which is a decentralized prediction market. And Augur has been working on this project since basically 2018, and it launched last year. And it's really advanced. It's being used. It's a really awesome project to watch in this space. And the next one is you know, Spank Chain, which is an adult entertainment website. And they've been doing a lot of innovative work with payment channels. So there's a lot of other projects that launched in the space last year, but those are three that are really worth noting. And just think about it. Like, Two years ago, we didn't even have these projects. We didn't have these big, you know, innovators in the space. Like the network was still growing and we were just kind of putting test smart contracts out there and sending Ether around and just buying cryptocurrency. That's all we're doing. So we made a lot of progress last year. It had a lot of success. So let's keep talking about that question. You know, will Ethereum succeed? So depending on how you define that, you've had a lot of success already with a lot of the stuff that's happened, right? Like I said earlier, Ethereum started as an experiment to see like, could we even run programs on a blockchain? And we're doing that. We're actually, you know, running complicated programs on blockchains. So let's talk about where Ethereum's gonna go and what I'm really excited about, which can bring a much higher degree of success that's gonna get closer to what, you know, everybody who's really impatient out there who wants to see, you know, blockchain just spread to every single person on the face of the earth, right? So let's talk about the things that are going to make Ethereum a lot better and sort of achieve a lot higher degree of success, stuff that I'm excited about. So the first thing is actually state channels. You know, this is something that's here already. Basically, it's a way to like make transactions between uh, users and settle the eventual result on the blockchain. Basically, it's going to allow you to like not have to use the blockchain for every single transaction, only ones you really care about. You know, the other thing is uh, Plasma. That's where, you know, transactions can get moved to side chains. We're already seeing people come up with implementations of this, where basically you can have a blockchain beside Ethereum and do stuff on that and then, like, you know, put the eventual result back on Ethereum itself. And another one, sharding. You know, that's something that we're going to look forward to in Ethereum 2.0, where we can basically break the network up into a bunch of smaller blockchains where, you know, not everybody has to participate in every single, you know, transaction. And that will also speed things up. And all these things together are going to, you know, sort of give Ethereum that next leg up to be really fast and support a lot more users. So that's what I'm looking forward to, to make Ethereum more successful than it is today. And also the next one that's gonna be a really killer for the network is zero knowledge. So basically it's gonna be a way to bring privacy to the Ethereum network. We can actually, you know, conceal information and put it out there so that not everything's just public where everyone can see it all the time. And that's a really exciting development that I'm looking forward to see in Ethereum. So that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you all like this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, whether you think Ethereum will succeed or not. So as always, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the thumbs up button down below. And you can also download all my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.